Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, I am the pixelated incarnation of some guy. And thank you very much for choosing to watch Overanalyzed Adventures. Today I'm going to be talking about the Blackwell Unbound, released on September 4th, 2007. It is the prequel, an unintended sequel to the Blackwell Legacy, and yes indeed, I did say unintended sequel. Because you see, the Blackwell Unbound originally began its life as a flashback sequence for the Blackwell Convergence, and then grew to be so big and robust that Dave Gilbert decided to release it as a standalone, no doubt after expanding upon it some more. So with that little interesting factoid right there, let's get started over analyzing this puppy now, shall we? Infinity. I've been told it's beautiful, but I don't think it's anything special. So this is Laura, and she's our hero, and she's also the aunt of the protagonist of the last game. You know, the same aunt that was in a coma for 25 years. But when you live like me, most things become quite ordinary. Life, death, tormented souls, it's all the same to me. Oh come on, Lord, buck up. Your brain is way nicer looking than that of your nieces. But anyway, yeah, the game's pretty clearly establishing that Lauren is indeed dead inside. That's probably why she smokes so much, she's just slowly committing suicide. Although, you gotta wonder, since she is smoking inside her brain, how the hell is she gonna wash off all those nicotine stains, cause those are a bitch to clean. Although you have to think it's probably quite the head rush to be smoking inside your own brain. But after Lauren monologues for a little bit longer, we get a nice intro that features plenty of smooth sacks and a date. Yeah, it's 1973. Which is good for Lauren because you can still smoke inside pretty much everywhere. And stay out! Aw, oh, hey, you know I don't like that. What's your beef anyway? I am not talking to you. Oh, promises, promises. So what's next on the list? What's next? The balcony. Why, gonna throw yourself over and join me? No, I'm having a cigarette. Great, you want a cigarette. What am I supposed to do? You can do whatever the hell you like. Yeah, nicotine addiction's pretty intense. And you can't move Lauren until she's done smoking her cigarette. Which, in adventure game time, means you're never going to be able to move her until you do the right sequence of events. Which means you gotta switch over to Joey. I know you got two playable characters in this game. And for the very first time in the Blackwell series, you get to be Joey. Which is wonderful, because you can, like, go through stuff. And yeah, you just talk to Lauren, and, well, Joey, of course, is a very sensitive guy. Take another drag of that cigarette, darling. You get real ugly when you stop smoking. Oh, is that right? Well... Ugly, am I? Take it easy, dear. It was just a little joke. A joke? Yeah. I'm a riot. Like today, when those pipes burst. Oh. <laughs> Wait, is, is that what's got you in such a guff? Um, well, Joey, she is wearing a white shirt, so that burst pipe could have inadvertently turned into a wet t-shirt contest. So I could probably understand why she's a bit upset. But as you can imagine, they do patch things up, otherwise you wouldn't be able to make progress in this game. So let's go ahead and make some progress in this game by looking over what we have to do tonight. And that's investigate a couple of maybe ghosting ghosting events. This one looks promising. Residents have reported strange music on the promenade late at night. Nobody knows where it comes from. A development corporation has halted construction after a series of accidents. Probably nothing, but worth checking out. Yeah, it's probably nothing. Oh, come on. We all know it's gonna be something. So now we got a couple of cases that we can investigate at our leisure. And I mean that. We can go back and forth between these two hauntings and try to crack the case or just focus on one. So yeah, it's like open world gaming in a retro 2D adventure game kind of way. But with that said, let's go check out the first case. And that's the ghost that's haunting the construction site. Because come on folks, we all know there's gonna be a ghost there. All's quiet so far. Oh no, it appears that the gate's locked. Which is a problem, considering that Lauren's a physical being, so she just can't phase through the locked door. So we're going to have Joey investigate this case all by himself, or at least the first half of it. Alright, I'm going in to check it out. Stay close to the wall. Yeah, sure. Let me know what you find. Hello? Anyone here? Ah. Well? What do you see? Is it clean? I'm afraid not. Well, hurry up then. I feel stupid pressed up against this wall. 
Oh, don't you worry, Lauren. You're going to have to do plenty of stupid things before the day's over. Okay, well, actually one. Because you see this ghost right here. She's convinced she's living in her apartment, so she won't open the door for Joey. So, Lauren, you're going to have to simulate some door knocking for us. Knock on the gate door. Knock on the door? Why? I'll explain later. Just do it. A knock. Oh my, a visitor. Uh, just a minute. Is my hair okay? It'll have to do. Hello? And as you can imagine, no matter how nice and polite we are, this ghost lady is just going to have none of it. You're not in a building, lady. Take a look around. I don't know what you're talking about. We're on the third floor. Look, there's the elevator down the hall. Ah, right, yeah, I see it. Are you sure you're feeling all right? So it's never that easy. There's no way of being direct with a ghost. After all, they're haunting places for a reason, and we'd need to figure that out. So we're gonna go into this trailer over here and click on everything, because it's absolutely important that we pick up every tidbit of information we can right here. And honestly, you're gonna need to write some stuff down. Like, you know, with a pen and paper, because the notebook doesn't take all the notes you need. That's right. We actually playing like a real investigator in the 70s. We have to take notes on paper. Pretty intense. So this little letter right here gives us the best lead we're going to get. Harriet Sherman. She apparently is being shafted by this construction company. So let's pay her a visit, because maybe she knows a thing or two about the neighbor. But how the hell are we going to do that? There's no return address on this paper. Well, first we have to go home and use our computer, I mean phone book. Because as we all know, Dave Gilbert likes to make you look up stuff. There's a phone number, but no address. Well, that's not a real problem. After all, we got a phone right here. And while we're at it, we should pretend to be a part of the real estate agency. I'm calling from Seagram Realty. Oh, why didn't you say? You've got my $60. Um, yes, yes, I do. But before I give it to you, I have to ask you a couple of questions. Fine, fine, fine. Come on by and I'll answer whatever you want. 24 Rector, down in Battery Park City. Just buzz up. So, Joey. Yeah? Got any spare cash on you? Sorry, left my wallet in my other pants. Probably the pair I was buried in. Uh-huh, Joey, whatever you say. But hey, on the plus side, I guess we don't have any money troubles. I suppose go saving pays pretty well. I don't know, but what I do know is we got a jar of money just hanging down this shelf right here that we're going to take to an old lady. So hopefully she can tell us about some neighbor she had who's now a ghost. It's open! I'm back here in the kitchen! And as you can expect, this old lady is not about to talk to us until she gets paid. Yeah, this old bird's got her priorities straight. You're welcome to ask me anything you'd like, after you give me the money. You got it? I sure do. It's about time. Give it here! Here you go. Hmm, it's all here, sure enough. I'd say thanks if I hadn't had to fight tooth and And before you joke about $60 not being worth much, in 1973, that was around $330. And I don't know anyone who's too rich to be sneezing at $330. But as you can expect, this old lady figures out pretty quickly that we're not from the realty agency. But hey, at least she's still game for answering all of our questions. What can you tell me about the construction site on 53rd Street? You've been there? How's the old place looking? It's a big hole in the ground. Ha! Can only be an improvement. I used to live there. Then Seagram Realty bought it and tore it down. Going to build something new and fancy, no doubt. Now, this could be a little bit weird if you come directly from playing the Blackwell Legacy to the Blackwell Unbound. Because you see, you have to work the same question over and over and over again until eventually you get no new answers. So after asking this lady the same question a couple of times, you finally get down to brass tacks. Who is Mavis Wilcox? A lunatic is what she was. She lived down the hall from me, so I know how crazy she was. Why was she crazy? She refused to leave is why. Seagram was offering her a fortune, 
but still she refused. And that, ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, is the ghost that's haunting the construction site. We got her name, and also we're gonna get her mail, because this old lady stole it from her. But hey, it's useful for our investigation, so let's dig through her personal effects. Once we get home, because we can't do it here in front of her, that would be in bad taste. There's not much in here, just a photograph and a letter. Oh, well this is a letter from some guy from the New Yorker, who is named John Mitchell. Obviously we're going to have to look that name up in the phone book. And also there's a lovely little photo of Mavis Wilcox in the literal flesh, and her son, who's wearing a Columbia sweatshirt. So we could probably hazard a guess that he's going to Columbia. So with this fresh, hot, sexy new information in our brains, let's go back to the construction site and chat up the ghost a little bit more. Oh boy, we've got company. Can you see? Pardon? Can't you see? See what, lady? The whole of the world. Connections, patterns, pulsing with life everywhere. Oh great, one of New York's finest crazies. Oh, if only you knew, Joey. But anyway, we gotta drive off this crazy lady by saying pretty much anything we want to her, and then she leaves. And then we can go talk to the ghost. Fool! Liar! Can't you see? Um... Useless! Useless! Well, that was delightful. But anyway, we gotta get a ghost to talk by pretending to be her son. Yeah, I know. Ghosts need better eyesight. They should have ate more carrots while they were living. It's me. Your son. Sam? Yep, that's me. Sam! It's, it's been, been so long. long. Look at you! you. Yeah, look at me. Sorry, I was so rude. I almost didn't recognize you. Come on in, Sam. I'll make you dinner. Ah, uh, no, I, I can only stay for a minute. And gather some important information from you. Like, what happened to our daddy? He apparently divorced her. But his last name was Durkin. Now, where have I heard that name before? But that's pretty much all the information we need from this ghost, at least this go around. We now know who our daddy is, or actually who her husband was and who her son's father is. So armed with that information, we can now go back home and look up some more stuff. Columbia University, operator speaking. How may I direct your call? How about Sam Durkin? Is there a Sam Durkin listed? Sam Durkin, yes. Hold, please. It's about time. Darkin. <gasps> it's the voice of Francisco Gonzalez. Is this Sam? Yeah. Who's this? My name is Lauren Blackwell. I was hoping to ask you a few questions about your mother. Oh. Questions, huh? Yeah. Alright, I'll bite. How do you know my mom? I'm investigating her death. Oh. You're a cop, are you? Because my dad was a cop. I know people. I can check. No, I'm not a cop. Didn't think so. Just a concerned citizen, huh? That's right. Somehow I don't believe you. Nobody in their right mind would be concerned about my mom. Whether you believe me or not, it can't hurt to talk to me. Maybe. Maybe not. But if you knew her, you'd know what apartment number she was in. I would? Sure you would. She never left the damn place. So what was it? Oh, puzzle time. Yeah, you're going to have to rely on listening to what people say and trying to figure out clues like, you know, you're investigating something. Yeah. The game doesn't like put it in the notes. That's why you gotta write some stuff down on a piece of paper, folks, to figure out that she lived in 3D. All right, so maybe you did know her. Thank you. So what do you want to know about it? Well, just about everything you can tell us, Francisco. I mean, Sam Durkin. But as you expect, Mr. Durkin here more or less reaffirms everything we already know. His mama never left her apartment for reasons of probably some mental disorder. And we also hear about how his daddy died. Probably because his mama was so crazy, which makes you wonder. But we learn a couple of very important facts. Fact number one, some guy from the New Yorker paid a visit to her before she died. And fact number two, he gave her a Mother's Day gift once. Which is a very unexpected thing for a son to do. Well, yeah, that's pretty hot and heavy right there, Durkin. But hey, let's go pay a visit to this guy from the New Yorker, who is a real live human being with a Wikipedia page and everything. Yes? Can I help you? Are you Mr. Mitchell? I sure am. I'm Lauren Blackwell. Well, do come in, Miss Blackwell. I'm just curious.
curious about the sort of work you do. I write about people, Miss Blackwell. What sort of people? Not the famous sort. Just ordinary people, like you or me. Ordinary people, like me. You found that amusing? Oh, not at all. So as you would expect, this kind, southern-sounding gentleman right here wrote about Mavis Wilcox, who apparently was offered a crap ton of money to leave her apartment, but refused to do so because likely she had some sort of mental disorder. But hey, that's why this guy wrote about her. And apparently she was also strangled to death in the middle of the night by some unknown assailant, which couldn't have been a very pleasant way to go for her. But hey, at least now we're going to know what her son got for her for Mother's Day one year. Did Mavis ever mention a gift or present from her son? Now that you mention it, yes. She showed me a leather-bound edition of Alice in Wonderland and said it was from her son. Well, thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Thank you very much for giving us that crucial bit of information because now we are armed with all we need to free the ghost from the construction site. Of course I still have it. It was the only Mother's Day gift you ever bought me, Sam. Can I see it? Whatever for. Come on, Ma. I just want to see it. Sure, sure Sam. Sam. It's, it's right, right on the, on the table. table. Great. Uh, why don't you bring it out here? You mean, pick it up? Yeah, pick it up and bring it over. Pick it up. Sure, I can pick it up. Oh! Oh no! What? The book! It's gone! Gone, huh? Imagine that. Somebody stole it! Sam, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Yeah, obviously we're going to have to be cruel to this poor disheveled ghost right here to free her. Come on, folks. Sometimes everyone needs a little bit of tough love. You need to find that book, Mom. I don't know if I can love a mother who loses my gifts. You don't mean that. I mean it, Mom. You need to tell me where the book is. But I don't know where to look. Now that we stabbed her with that emotional dagger, we can manipulate her to come outside. And we do. Oh, where's the building? Where's my apartment? Where's my home? It's gone! Those bastards, they tore it down! You, you made me leave and they tore it down! Hey, calm down. I've got nothing now. Mom. I am not your mother. You are not my son. My son hates me. All I had left was my home and then, then I, oh God. Are you happy now? You couldn't just leave me there. You had to bring me out. You had to make me remember. I'm sorry. It's horrible. Being dead, it's horrible. You get used to it. I... I don't want to feel like this anymore. Everything is so dark and cold. Can I go home now? Sure. Sure, I can take you home. Just hold on to this. Over to you, kid. Right. Well, it must always be fun to wake up in your brain in a heap. But as you can imagine, we gotta talk to this ghost lady and convince her to go into the light. Oh my god. Mavis? It's so bright and big. It just goes on forever. <laughs> like my, um, oh gosh. I'm nothing from the waist down. I just want to go home. Please, can I go home? I think that's the only home you've got now. I'm sorry. What a legacy. Husband gone and dead. My son hates my guts. My home is gone. My life, over. But on the plus side, you did manage to scare some big burly construction workers for a while. I remember that too. Dying, I mean. That old woman choking me. Old woman? She just came in and killed me. She said she was going to help me. Oh my god, we met an old lady earlier who was ranting and raving, and with a city of millions of people, there can't be that many old ladies. But fortunately for Mavis, she's at peace now. She moves on to the next life, and we are now armed with some curious information. A really nasty old hags running around killing people, and oh god, she's right there in front of me, isn't she? Uh... Joey? Yeah, hi. Glad you're up. You... Did you... did you save her? Yeah, yeah, sure. We saved her. Joey, is she talking to you? Yeah, go figure. Oh, hot damn, things just got interesting. This old lady can see ghosts and create them, too. Thank you, both of you. I only wanted to save them. Mavis told me she was killed by an old woman. Was that you? 
I save just like you. Who are you? I am the Countess. Countess? Countess of what? It's the only name I know. I saved them. I helped them. I... I'm sorry. Hey, get back here. Don't just stand there. Let's get after her. Well, that was really weird. I wonder what's gonna come from this. Perhaps we'll find out next time in part two of the overanalysis of the Blackwell Unbound, which will also serve as a finale for it. Pretty exciting stuff's afoot, folks. Hopefully you'll stick around and watch it.